Now the story of Moses and the crossing of the Red Sea in Watch. Watch. Hello, it's dressing up time again. The children are dressing up as gods. Egyptian gods. The Egyptians believed that there were lots of different gods and they used to paint them with human bodies and the heads of animals or birds. Now Sophie here is going to be a god called Anubis. Put your mask on Sophie. That's a girl. Anubis had the head of a dog and used to look after the dead. David is going to be Thoth. Now Thoth had the head of a bird and he was the scribe of the gods. Now there he is in the painting. How can you tell he's a scribe? Well, what's he holding? A writing case, isn't he? A scribe's writing case. Now, Joanna is going to be another bird-headed god, Horus. Put your mask on, Joanna. There we are, Horus. We showed you Horus in last week's programme. He was on the wall painting in Nefertari's tomb. And last of all, we've got the gobbler. Come on, Marco, let's get this mask on. Oops, mind your eyes. Now, the gobbler was a nasty sort of god, more of a monster, really. He had the head of a crocodile, the body of a lion, and the back legs of a hippopotamus. We'll be telling you more about him in a moment. Right, let's get your hippo feet on. Marco, there we are. And now the lion's claws. Put them on. You really look like God now, don't you? Right, that's it. Now, the Egyptians thought they would meet all these gods when they died. Now, if you remember, the dead body was brought across the Nile on a funeral boat so that it could be buried on the west side of the river. This was the side where the sun set. And the Egyptians believed that the dead person would follow the setting sun down below the horizon and journey on till he came to the land of the dead. And this was where the gods lived. And the Egyptians thought that the dead person would meet them in the Hall of Judgment. That's the dead man, the figure dressed in white. And there are all the gods waiting to test him. It's a scene that the Egyptians love to paint and it's a scene that the children are going to act out for us. Here's how they made their masks. They took a strip of card like this and stapled the ends together to make a, a circle, like so. Then they took the sides of the head and stapled them on like that. One side. Ah, coming up. Side two. Then they fasten them together in the front like that. Well, maybe another one there. And here we have one mark. Now to make the scales, you need two paper plates, some string and a coat hanger. First of all, punch three holes in the plate and thread the string through and tie it and pull it up to a loop at the top. Now then all you have to do is hang it over the ends of the coat hanger. Now, if you haven't got a coat hanger shaped exactly like this one, I'm sure your teacher could bend up the ends with a pair of pliers. Now, after that, all you have to do is to cut out a feather of truth. Fix it on some plasticine, and then cut out some hearts for the dead people. Here we are. One, two, three hearts for one, two, three dead people. And now we're all set to play the game. Have you all been good people on Earth? Yes. yes. Are you sure? Oh, really? You haven't done anything naughty. No. Well, we'll soon see, won't we? Of course, it's only pretend. But if they're telling the truth, their heart will be lighter than the feather, and they'll be allowed to go through to live with the gods and have a lovely time in the blessed fields. But if they've been telling fibs, they'll get gobbled up by the gobbler. Right, Horace. Now, your job 
is to lead the dead people into the Hall of Judgment. And who's first? It's Lisa. Oh, Lisa. Come on, Lisa. You put your heart on her new bit of scale, and it balances. Good girl. You must have led a good life. So you take your heart. Now you can go and live in the blessed fields and be happy ever after. Good. You might get the next one, you know, Gobbler. Right, who's next, Horace? It's little mm. Anne. Mm. Come on, Anne. Well, Let's see whether you've been a good girl all your life. Put on the scales. Oh, yes, it balances too. Good girl. Fine. Right, now who's next? Oh, oh you're getting oh, hungry, are you, Gobbler? Good. Well, now let's see what we've got for you here. Let's see, you put your heart down. Oh, it's heavy. He's been a bad one. Come on, Gobbler, get him. He's gone. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Never survived. <laughs> you can have fun with that. It's a good scene to act out. And so is the next part of our story. Do you remember where we got to? Pharaoh refused to let Moses go, so God sent the ten plagues. And the last of the plagues killed Pharaoh's own son. So the Pharaoh finally set the Israelites free, and Moses left Egypt with his people. And as he led them off into the wilderness, the long, winding column of people stretched into the distance. They were heading towards the Red Sea, the first stage of their journey to the promised land. The Israelites carried with them the few possessions they still had left, and the food and weapons they had managed to seize from the Egyptians before they escaped. It was a weary journey. Many of them were bowed down by their burdens. Some were too young to walk and had to be carried. Others were too old and could only hobble along slowly with the aid of a stick. In the heart of the desert, it was dark and gloomy. There were no paths to follow, no light to guide their journey. And the Israelites would all have been lost if God hadn't shown them the way. He made two signs for them to travel by. One was a cloud, a swirling cloud that sailed in front of them all through the day like a gray, misty ship. The other sign was a great fire in the sky, like the burning bush that Moses had seen on the mountainside. All day long, the fire raged on through the sky before them, and the Israelites followed these signs that God had made for them till they came safely through the wilderness. And there, by the edge of the Red Sea, they set up their camp. Back in Egypt, the Pharaoh's thoughts turned once again to the Israelites. Now that he had buried his son, he put away his grief and thought only of revenge. Why should I let them go, he thought. Slaves they are, and slaves they shall remain. And he told his generals to call out the army. Of course, the army in ancient Egypt was very different from an army today. There were no tanks, no aeroplanes, and no machine guns. No, the foot soldiers were armed with bows and arrows, like these men. Or else with spears and shields, like these soldiers. And as for tanks, the nearest thing they had to that was the horse-drawn chariot. And this is what the pharaoh would ride in. A driver would steer the horses for him while he himself fired arrows at the enemy. <gasps> Battles were such noisy things that it was difficult to make yourself heard. And the pharaoh would give his orders with blasts on the trumpets. Here's the actual sound of an ancient Egyptian trumpet. And here's what it would have sounded like as the pharaoh charged into battle. It was with chariots such as these that pharaoh set off in pursuit of the Israelites. He couldn't bear to think of them slipping out of his hands, and he sped off into the desert, determined to catch them and destroy them. At their camp by the edge of the sea, the Israelites heard the faraway rumble of chariots. It was like distant thunder, and when they looked back, they saw on the horizon the small cloud of dust that showed the Pharaoh's men were drawing near. The Israelites were terrified. Why did you bring us here, they said to Moses. Why didn't you leave us to serve Pharaoh in Egypt? And Moses said to God, what am I to do? How can I save my people? But then 
the great fire that burned in the night sky began to move. It moved backwards till it stood between the Israelite camp and Pharaoh's army. And as it moved, it changed from fire to deep darkness. And a thick black curtain, blacker than any night, fell over the shore. And God said to Moses, all tonight I will keep you hidden from the Egyptians. And in the morning light, this is what you must do. Take your staff in your hand and point it out into the middle of the Red Sea. The waters will part for you, and then you must cross with your people to the other side. Moses and his people were afraid, for they couldn't believe that such a strange thing could happen. And when the first light dawned, he did what God told him and stretched his staff out above the sea. And immediately, a great wind rose up, and Moses was amazed because the wind drove a vast hole into the sea, splitting the waters down to the sand. And there in front of the Israelites, a path opened up that stretched across the sea between two enormous walls of water. Moses and his people began to cross, and they were nearly at the other side by the time Pharaoh reached the edge of the sea. Pharaoh stared at the walls of water. He was frightened because he knew that this must be God's work. But still his anger drove him on. Still he wanted to destroy the Israelites. And he charged down onto the seabed at the head of his 600 chariots. By now the Israelites were safely on the other side. And God told Moses to turn and stretch his staff out towards the Egyptian army. As he did so, the water started to close together. With a thunderous roar, the seas surged towards Pharaoh, and as the waves smashed together, they plunged soldiers and chariots down, down to the depths of the ocean. The Israelites could hardly believe their eyes. It had all happened so quickly. But when they realized that their enemy lay dead, they burst into triumphant song. Egypt lay behind them, and their days of slavery were over. God said to Moses, cross over, cross over, cross over. God said to Moses, cross over, reach the promised land. God said to Moses, cross over, cross over, cross over. God said to Moses, cross over, reach the promised land. Well, that's the last of our Egypt programs. And that's as far as we're taking the Moses story. Mind you, there's nothing to stop you finding out what happened to him next. You can read all about it in the Bible. And when you've done that, you can act out a little play about one of his adventures. That's what this school is going to do. Some of them have dressed up as Egyptians. There's the Pharaoh's crown going on. Some are dressing up as Israelites. And some are going to play the part of the Red Sea. Right, all set. Time for the crossing. God said to Moses, cross over, cross over, cross over. God said to Moses, cross over, reach the promised land. Moses stretched his hand out and dried up all the sea. Be free. God said to Moses, cross over, cross over, cross over. God said to Moses, cross over, reach the promised land. Moses' men crossed over and temple at the sight. God held back the waters on the left hand and the right. God said to Moses, cross over, cross over, cross over. God said to Moses, cross over, reach the promised land. Pharaoh told his soldiers, catch those Hebrew slaves. When the waters thundered back, they all sank beneath the waves. God said to Moses, cross over, cross over, cross over. God said to Moses, cross over, reach the promised land. The waters covered Pharaoh, his soldiers sank like lead. The Israelites were safe and sound, the people reached the higher ground. While Pharaoh's men had all been down, and the Pharaoh, he lay dead. 
Cross over, 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 cross over